I, uh, last weekend I went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium to set the state, set the expectations here quickly. I did not like touch Rose of the Otter. You can't do that, but I got close and then, uh, they got to sh show us a bunch of cool stuff. So today I'm going to show the pictures and videos from the visit to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, as well as playing an otter video game. I found a really great looking otter video game on Steam that everybody agrees looks incredible. So. The context for, for the Monterey Bay Aquarium, obviously we've talked about it during the charity uh, stream this week, or sorry, uh, this year. We did the charity stream. I talked about how I went there as a kid. I grew up in Sacramento, which is like three or four hours from the aquarium. I loved the aquarium. I loved anything that had to do with like ocean and tide pools and all that stuff, um, which uh, which was awesome. Very, I, I just, I loved it growing up. I haven't been able to go as an adult. The last time I went, I was like 20, Three, I want to say 22. It was after college and I went skydiving in Monterey Bay, which skydiving is kind of overrated Gonna be honest with you But while we were there waiting for the skydiving thing We went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium and that was the most recent time that I went and uh, man It was it's it's awesome So it's just a really nice aquarium that's in Monterey Bay in California And then obviously they do all this charity work on top of being a or they do all this this good work on top of being just a normal Aquarium that you can go to I highly recommend going to the aquarium. It is uh, it is it is great So this is me in the hotel room um, this is it when I woke up. This is Monterey out there. It's very pretty. This is me enjoying the view We got there 30 minutes before it opened, which was awesome. Got the VIP treatment um, Got there 30 minutes before it opened so at 9 30 and they were basically showing us a bunch of stuff before like before uh, Why are you saying American Airlines? Doug you have legs. I do have legs Yeah, I guess you, you most people haven't seen them, huh? So we basically got there like and nobody's there so Essentially for the first hour that we're there or so we uh, we just got to like see exhibits and stuff that weren't um, That are normally really crowded by people. Where are his legs? Yeah, sorry. Let me let me I'll put the picture here whenever there's a picture um, Of me, I'll try to get it to a picture that you guys are comfortable with where there's no legs involved tall reveal No, these are just Paul tall people. We're all like six foot. Okay, so this is the kelp forest this is one of the opening things So we, we took a picture there and then this ladies and gentlemen is fucking Rosa. Ooh. I'm gonna be honest with you. She's pretty goddamn cute in the video that we watch every year, but she's really, really cute in person. So this is the this is the exhibit that we watch on stream. And then uh, Rosa, the other two were, were back here, Ruby and Ivy, but Rosa would just come by the window repeatedly. Wait, sorry, there's no, yeah, okay, no legs, you're safe. She would just float. Okay, so there's this big pool, right? It's this, it's this big pool that, we, that we've seen before, basically, on stream, right? Um, and Rosa just swims in these circles around, like, over and over, and then we'll just kind of slide along the glass all the way around while just, like, napping and chilling. So they fed her, they fed her, like, right before, like, earlier that morning. So she was just, she was really in her zone. She was just chilling out, having a great time. Um, but the whole time that we were there for, like, 15 minutes just, like, watching, she would just, like, come right up to the glass and then just sit there rubbing her little face like this and just doing cute stuff. Like, just would just keep floating by. The other two were back, I mean, you could see one back here. Ruby and Ivy were, were just doing their own thing. And then Rosa literally just hung out by the window for, like, 15, 20 minutes straight. It was so adorable. They were actually insanely cute in person. So, again, I wasn't, I wasn't able to, like, touch or interact with Rosa for two reasons. One, uh, mostly, like, a... Well, so one, one is liability. The other is just like safety. Apparently otters can get COVID. <laughs> um, she's vaxxed for COVID uh, because they're part of the weasel family, which are like more susceptible to it. For safety reasons on top of me not being like a trained otter handler, and they probably don't want some like deranged dude who screams at video games all day to like run into their otter exhibit and start petting the otters. Um, for, for logistical reasons, I can't go interact with Rosa, but so they basically brought us in early before anybody else is there and then did a private feeding session. So this is, this is going on like, this is all like before anybody else gets to come in. And so you can see they brought like out here, out, out up there, they brought like a big tray of food out. And so all of them got to have like a big thing. And then there's all these enrichment toys that are full of clams. So the other two, the other two go into the corner and then just whack their stuff against the corner. But uh, Rosa will just go grab food and then come by the window. So you can see everybody here, like all the all the staff, will come by the window, oh and then just come right up to me and then just hang out. It was so cute. So there's there's these are little like toys that emulate clams, and you can see she's pulling the food out from the inside of it. It's so freaking adorable. And then she'll just kind of rotate around a lot. Also, they have like pouches 
it seems like they, they can just apparently their skin isn't attached to anything so you can just like they can just store stuff in their skin and like make little makeshift pouches out of it the other and i uh, don't freak out the other otters kept stealing from rosa they would come up and like jump in and take her toy from her and apparently it's because she's like a little bit older she doesn't see them coming and apparently otters are kind of mean to each other um, they're like cats, where they'll just sort of... They're more like cats, apparently, in their temper, rather than dogs. But, look at her holding it in her little pouch, and then she just slides in. It's so cute! Oh yeah, there's the banging. <laughs> we asked why they spin all the time, and they said they don't know. At least I think. Maybe I'm misremembering. I'm pretty sure that they said they don't know why. It's just, just like a thing they do. Like, there isn't a reason that she just keeps doing barrel rolls. It's to get the juices off their fur? Alright. I mean, that checks out to me. <laughs> Look at her little paws! Like, she'll just, like, do this, and just, like, rub her little face. Or she'll just rub her paws together. She just does cute stuff all the time. <laughs> it's so cute! Yeah, and I guess their skin is just, like, they can just use it for whatever they want. They can just, like, mold it around like Play-Doh. Look at that! Oh, this. Well, I, I, I think I asked why they do this, and <laughs> I don't think they knew. <laughs> Maybe they did and I missed it. Like, this does not make sense to me. What are you doing? Even if you, chat, come up with some plausible reason for why this creature has evolved to do this, I don't believe it. I think it's just for fun. The the barrel rolls? The barrel rolls, that makes sense. You get food off your stomach or whatever. But just spinning like Sonic for 20 straight seconds? Oh, and then after they ate all the food, they started just eating ice. Like, they would just go grab ice and chomp on it. Ice cubes they like because they just like the the experience of just like chomping on things. It reminds them of chomping stuff out in the wild. Yeah, so I mean you can see Ro Rosa just swims by. It reminds them of human fingers. No. Otters are not, uh, they don't eat humans. Yet. So, all, all, we've, all I've seen up to this point when we've done these charity things is just like Rosa. We just look at the otters. But they have like a whole otter rehabilitation program, which they do. And so when we talk about like them help Monterey Bay Aquarium helping the otter population, like revive, right? Because they were almost extinct. I forget how many years ago, but uh, it's like 30 or something years ago. Like they were almost extinct. Uh, sea otters were very, 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 very almost dead. And then they've brought it back. And now there's like 3000 or something in the wild. Um, like, a, a good, healthy population out in the wild now. And so, they do a bunch of work to help sort of manage that population and get them back. So, Rosa is a surrogate mother, so she's had 15 pups. So, if they find, like, pups out in the wild who, like, lose their mother or are injured or whatever, they can bring them back. And they have these, like, special pools, which are for rehabilitating otters. So, Rosa has personally taken care of, like, 15 pups and helped them get back to, like... Uh, you know, to being at a healthy level, show them how to, to eat and interact and all that stuff. And then once they're, once the otters are rehabilitated, then they can release them into the wild. They have these like tanks at the top. And so the tanks are like, they'll have like four or five otters in there who are going through rehabilitation and sort of can monitor them here. And this is away from the public. So these are otters that like are going to go back out into the wild, right? So they want to minimize human contact and they want to minimize otters getting comfortable with humans because what used to happen is they did programs where like the caretakers would just ha like would just become friends with the otters, right? And the otters would see the humans as just like close friends. And so they would um, they would uh, <laughs> they would go out like swimming with the otters. So this is this used to happen. They would like, you know, they would just take like a Rosa and bring them out into the into the bay and they would just swim together and the otters would just hang out. Like you just have your own like water dog that you just get to get to swim with for a couple hours a day. Which sounds like the greatest job ever. The problem is that once they would release those otters back into the wild, the otters would be like, oh cool, humans are super chill, and then not be very uh <laughs> self-sufficient out in the wild. So it became kind of a problem is like if you let them the otters will just see us as friends and hang out and not want to go off into their, you know, into the into the wild and do their own thing. And so they had to stop the program where, like, they would swim with the otters and instead they're like, okay, we actually need to kind of, like, anonymize ourselves. If it's an otter like Rosa, then it's fine. Rosa is, like, permanently in the exhibit, like, permanently in the aquarium. She's non-releasable. So, uh, so for her, for her, it's fine and she knows the, 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 caretakers right like the caretakers are like are familiar with her they have like verbal commands all this stuff um but for the ones that they're going to put out into the wild those 
otters can't become super familiar with humans. So they have these tanks up at the top. They have these tanks up at the top of the aquarium, basically. So this is like above the the public otter exhibit, and it's like two big tanks with a bunch of otters that are just swimming around. And you can see all this is like clams and stuff. Like they're just grinding out food all day long. Um, and then every couple of days they have to like swap the tanks, and so they have to like catch the otters and nets to move them to the other tank. Um, and so with that one, they're able to, they don't have to wear the thing, but when they're actually interacting with the with the otters, they have to like be anonymous. They have to not be recognizable as a human. So these otters don't get used to seeing humans being comfortable with them. So they have these suits that they put on that they had me put on one, which is wear like a black parka and then these big gloves and then this like Darth Vader face. visor. <laughs> So this is what they look like when they're handling the otters because that way like if they're you know doing vet stuff or whatever else This way the otters are not like oh humans are super chill They're just like oh the terrifying uh, Darth Vader comes and takes care of me every once in a while And then hopefully they don't think anybody's Darth Vader out in the wild. Let's see what else. Okay. This is the sea otter diet So you can see 10 pounds of headless gulf shrimp 3.3 pounds of whole squid 15 pounds of surf clam tongue the otters eat like, I don't know, yeah, like 25 pounds of food a day. You can see the weights down here. So Rosa's 44 pounds. Damn, dude, Kit, you're packing. This was crazy. And it also showed like, again, like they actually, they need a lot of resources to like take care of the animals. This is daily for five otters. That's just the five otters that are on ex are rotating in and out of exhibit. They also have all the otters that they're bringing in to re rehabilitate, to get healthy, to go back out into the wild. Like, they had an otter recently that was bit by a shark. So, she's, like, chilling in the rehabilitation tank. And they're just getting her, like, back to healthy weight and whatnot. Just eating lots of clams and shrimp and all that good stuff. So, we, like, are actually helping contribute to feeding very, very hungry otters. This is a... I took a picture of this picture. I don't know what this picture is. This is where the nuclear waste is installed. This is a fish in a tank. I don't know why they put the fish in the tank. Probably for good... Probably for something good, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a science box, all right? Okay, so this is the this is the, the plaque, and you can see here, don't worry, I don't have legs. So the plaques update every spring, I believe, early spring. So right now in the Monterey Bay Aquarium, if you go, it will represent last year's, uh, last year's donation, not this year's. So you can see this is the 25,000 and above, below here is like the 10,000 and above, because last year we, did, we, gen we raised 13.6 thousand. So we're we're here. Um, we're slightly below Nancy and Bill Doolittle, but we're up in, in the big tier. I think there's a video of me. All right. So chat, we started it here, which is at these doors, and then this is where it. Yeah, it starts at 2,500 over here. Turns into the 2,500 tier. All these, and then okay, that's this. It's 2,500 and above. All those, and then last year. So that was year two. We were in that group. Here we moved into uh, Packard Circles five grand. This is 10,000 starts down here. So we moved into the 10,000 above tier and we are here. Pretty good. That was 2021 and then 2022. We're up in the very first column now and we'll be here next year. Wait, do we get more than Google? <laughs> Did we beat Google? We beat Google. <laughs> we beat Google. <laughs> So next, next year we're fucking, we're buying by Google. And then we promptly went and ate a bunch of fish, which felt a little bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, we went and ate fish. But they had an olive oil bar, like just for olive oil. So we went in there and I'd never, I didn't even realize something like this exists. I think I took a picture of it. Oh, sorry. I don't have legs. Don't worry. It's just shit loads of olive oil, dude. These are all different. There's like butter oil which I tried and it made me nauseous. Basil oil, it was okay. Herb olive oil. Uh, Tuscan, that was the best one. It was so good. Yeah, this one was gross. And we went out and tried some. <laughs> oh, God. Nice job, brother. <laughs> Stop. I had like half the bottle. Oh, sorry, yeah. Th that wasn't real. Those legs are added in post. I'm used to olive oil bottles where, like, the end has, like, the plastic thing to make it so it, it comes out in a really small amount. This just is, like, drinking from an open water bottle. I, it was like I had so much olive oil there, so that was nice, and that definitely helped with the nausea. 
Now we're back in the actual exhibit. So this is just me going around looking at fish and stuff. This is the kelp forest. Wow, Pog, very cool. Bird, very cool bird. This is a, uh, this is a plant. This is, um, this is an ocean. So you can go out onto the deck and you just like look out at monitor. This is like right at the aquarium. You just like walk out the doors and you just get to look out. There was actually wild sea otters swimming around. I didn't get a picture of it when they were out there, but, and then I asked the otter, the otter caretakers. And I was like, how often are otters just like hanging out? And they're like, oh, all the time, like every day. So they just have, if you go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium and you just look out into the ocean, there's just, there's just otters swimming around a lot of the time. Like they were out like here and here and you could just see them floating. It's so cute. Like they're literally just hanging out in this, in the bay. This is a fish. It's a bathroom. It's a jelly, that's a jellyfish. And that's a, that's a fish. That's the trip to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. That was it. Happy birthday, Rosa. I think the very last thing is, uh, congratulations, Doug. You did it. You're incredible. Great job, Doug. Doug. You're amazing. I want to be like, wow. Doug, One last so thing. Cool. What an amazing He's gamer the best. in person. This He's Doug the best Doug gamer. Is. Wow. Oh my God. You're incredible. Doug. Congratulations, wow. Doug. You did it. Congratulations, Thank you. Doug. 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 You did it. Amazing. The last wow. thing Doug. to Doug. close Doug. out. Doug. The 2022 Monterey Bay Aquarium fundraiser season. Oh my God! You're incredible, Doug. Is to beat another otter. This otter-based video game. I don't know how long this. It doesn't look very. Um. It's beautiful. So I was uncertain what to think about it. And then I saw this review. This is this was released a couple years ago. This game saved my life. I'm 27. My ex-wife and I have a daughter together and adopted our son together. They're now both four years old. When we were going through our separation, I found myself lost and miserable. I was self-destructive. I got so mad one day from everything spiraling out of control that I punched some concrete in a moment of overwhelming emotion. That caused me to break my fifth metacarpal in my right hand, my working hand, my games hand, the hand that I held and carried my children to bed with, the hand I desperately needed to make sure I could continue to provide. After learning the severity of my self-inflicted damage, I was borderline suicidal. Keep in mind, that was just a few months before this. I was the happiest man with no history of depression or anxiety. I've never had fits of rage or been one to break down or cry, but I was in a low spot that just really buried me from being able to see the light on the other side. Having nothing better to do, I searched for a game I could play one-handed while I recovered. I somehow stumbled upon this game and read some of the reviews. I decided that it had to be worth a shot. I must admit, I didn't beat the game or play nearly as long as some of you. In fact, I may have only played this game a day or two. With that being said, after doing so, I had found new joy and hope for life. I was able to put behind me the pain and suffering that had been cast over me. I was able to experience other people's joy and happiness. I was able to see the fruits of my labor in quotes for some reason. I relaxed for five heart, 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 heart minutes to this music long enough to realize I was gonna be okay. After coming to that realization, I turned the game off and I went back to work. It hurt my hand like hell, but I was motivated. I stopped feeling so damn sorry for myself and I became the father I needed to be in that moment, not the weak boy I was behaving as. Today, I'm a close friend with my kids' mothers. We don't fight or argue or say hurtful things to each other. We are parents and friends. I now have three kids. My third child is, wait for it, also four years old. The woman I am with was going through a very similar situation at the time of my own separation, and we just stumbled into each other's lives unexpectedly. We have been in a relationship for a year now and are very happy together. Moral of the story, you never know what life holds in store for you. And if I would have given up when all the odds were stacked against me, I wouldn't be where I am today. This silly little game helped me realize that. Thank you. So when I read this, I knew. I knew we had to play. It looked a little bit plain. But I purchased another otter, and I'm ready. All right, here we go. Another otter. What do I do? The click? Okay, J jumps. Oh, W A S D. It's 
that it? Okay, there's no... Oh! Let us gamble. Okay, I'm gonna do, um... I'm gonna do a prediction. The prediction is gonna be... Does Doug... Die a single time? Ever. Do I beat the Do I die a single time while beating this game? Get your bets in. Apparently I have five hearts. Okay. Let's keep going. Lot riding on this now. Alright, forgot. It's WASD and J, which is... Oh, I got hit. What the fuck?!